So the last set of reactions in this chapter are going to be what we call oxidative cleavage. And the first type that this occurs in is called ozonolysis. We're going to use ozone, which is just simply O3. So and if we take a look at how this reaction is going to occur, oxidative cleavage here is where you cleave the carbon-carbon double bond in half, exactly in half. So and then this half right here gets a double bond to oxygen instead. And then this half right here also ends up with a double bond to oxygen instead. So predicting the products is not so bad. Just cleave that carbon-carbon double bond in half and give each of those carbons a double bond to oxygen instead. So one product here leading to two. Uh, if we kind of take a look at how this mechanism occurs here. So we're gonna come and again, alkene will be the nucleophile in step one. And we'll look at not the entire mechanism, but quite a bit of it. So in this case, we're gonna attack right here, which moves these electrons here. And also this carbon attacks back right here. And it leads to this lovely intermediate. This little lovely intermediate is gonna break down and reform a ring here. Uh, we don't need to know the mechanism of that and form a very similar looking intermediate, but we can kind of see how this side here is gonna end up looking like this. So we can kind of see how this side here is gonna end up looking like so. So again, the mechanism besides that first step is not the most important thing in the world here. Um, but the big thing is how do we predict products with this? Well, it turns out there's actually two steps to this. This is step one. Step two over here, so in this example required a reducing agent, and reducing agent's DMS, which stands for dimethyl sulfide. You might see just DMS written out. You might see dimethyl sulfide drawn out, or you might see a condensed structure, so CH3, to S. Any of these can be written for step two. So, but this is ozonolysis, and we'll find out in a second. This is ozonolysis under reducing conditions. So let's take a little deeper look at predicting products for ozonolysis reactions. And it turns out we really have two options. There's reducing conditions, which we kind of just studied, as well as oxidizing conditions. And if we look at the reducing conditions first, again, just predicting products, my personal favorite is just to redraw your reactant and leave out the double bond. And then where that double bond used to be, just give each of those carbons a double bond to oxygen instead. And so in this case, we've got a ketone on top, and then we've got an aldehyde on bottom. And for that aldehyde, we will often draw in the hydrogen. We don't normally draw in carbon-hydrogen bonds, but for an aldehyde, it's actually proper to kind of draw that hydrogen in. So, but these would be your two products. And as we said on the last slide here, in that second step, this is dimethyl sulfide, often abbreviated DMS. Your other option is you could also add zinc and water as a, a reducing agent as well. So this would be ozonolysis under reducing conditions, and it's that second step that ultimately determines whether it's oxidizing or reducing conditions. But we can also do it under oxidizing conditions, and the only difference here will be step two. Instead of using a reducing agent, we're gonna use an oxidizing agent here, hydrogen peroxide. So, and as a result, so you're going to get that ketone still, and initially you will get that aldehyde, but that aldehyde will be oxidized immediately to a carboxylic acid instead. So instead of a bond to a hydrogen, it's now an, a bond to another oxygen, and this is what we call being oxidized from aldehyde to ketone. We'll study the oxidation of an aldehyde to a ketone in more detail later on. Now just kind of take it from my, my word for it here. This is an oxidation, and hence the oxidizing condition. So the key here is this. When you do this under oxidizing conditions, if you get a ketone, we'll find out ketones aren't largely oxidizable in any normal sense, and it's going to stay a ketone. But any aldehydes you form, or at least that you think you're going to form, instead form carboxylic acids under oxidizing conditions. I want to take one last look at oxidative cleavage under oxidizing conditions. And as we said a little bit ago, one way to accomplish this is with ozonolysis here, where O3, ozone in the first step, and then a, an oxidizing agent, hydrogen peroxide, in the second step. But there is another option here, and that other option involves potassium permanganate. Now, we saw earlier with an alkene, potassium permanganate, when it's cold and dilute, uh, will just simply carry out synhydroxylation. But it turns out when it's hot and concentrated under acidic conditions, it'll actually carry out oxidative uh, cleavage as well. And so in this case, it does it under oxidizing conditions. Potassium permanganate itself is an oxidizing agent. And so it turns out you'll initially form that aldehyde uh, in this example, but that aldehyde will get oxidized to a carboxylic acid as well. So with oxidizing conditions, any ketones you form are going to stay ketones. So, but any aldehydes that looks like you might form from oxidative cleavage become carboxylic acids instead. And so in this example, we get one carboxylic acid and one ketone.